Today's tutorial, we're going to go through how to create a form in HubSpot. So forms are how you're collecting all of this information on these contacts who are coming to your website. Again, this can be done through list imports, uh, but those are offline sources. So, you know, let's say somebody wanted to contact uh, your team or they wanted to download premium content, you'd create a form for that. So to get to forms, you got our master navigation, marketing, lead capture, and then forms. This will give you a page, a list of all of your forms that you have with broken down by specific metrics like views, submission rates, submissions, and how many pages they appear on. Um, make sure you are selecting the time period you want. So if you're doing today, it might seem a little low if you're not seeing any submissions versus all time where you get to see a lot more. So to create a new form, we want to go to the create form on the top right. We're going to create a regular form. You can create a pop-up form. Uh, which would appear as either in the, as you can see, the bottom right or the bottom left as a top or in the middle, as you can see here. Uh, but just know that uh, it's a multi-step form um, and not just a pop-up itself. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to go through a regular form. I'm going to click Next. I usually like to start from a blank template. Uh, but you can choose specific templates that HubSpot gives you. A lot of them are just kind of variations of email, first name, last name with some sort of additional field. Um, but I'm going to choose blank template and press start. And this is it. And so basically what happens now is you get to drag and drop all of these specific questions that you have. So, you know, in this form, I do want to ask for first name and I want to ask for last name. Make sure you always ask for email because that is how the that is what HubSpot uses to associate contacts in HubSpot with tracking cookies on their browser. So emails are crucial. If you do not include email in the form, um, you're going to be losing a lot of information on all those form submissions. So make sure email is always included. Um, but let's say I want first name to be required. I'm going to do make this field required. And then actually I want to change just that first name to what is your first name question mark so that'll change it right there I'm gonna keep last name as last name email I'll keep that um, but you know let's say this is actually I'm gonna rename this form to be something like uh, request more information so this is a RMI request more information form because they want to learn more about something right so this submit button I don't really like the text of submit so I'm actually gonna click on submit and I'm gonna change this to actually learn more so instead of someone pressing the submit button, they're gonna be pressing a learn more button, which just makes a little more contextual sense. Um, again, these are all the contact properties um, that we have within HubSpot and all the contact properties they have created in HubSpot. Um, if you haven't, if there's not a contact property in here that you like or that makes sense, you can create a new field. It'll run you through the same step as creating a contact property if you went through the portal settings. Uh, but let's say I wanted to add a file field. I'm going to name this some sort of demo file field. Um, I'm put in contact information. I'm not going to add a description. And there it is. Uh, my demo file field where people can upload files um, on this form. I can add a CAPTCHA automatically to help prevent spam. And I can also add a rich text area, which is just a nice way to kind of break up uh, different sections of a form in case you're using a really long form. Again, that's all drag and drop. Queued progressive fields are a pretty cool feature where you can essentially, let's say, um, you ask for last name a lot uh, in in a in a form. Um, you can actually replace last name with some sort of progressive field. So now that I enabled last name to be replaced with queued progressive field in this progressive field options. If I go back and I actually want to um, figure out which city they're from, I'm going to add city down here to this queued progressive field section. And any time where last name is already known, when someone's trying to fill out this form, last name will disappear and city will be brought up to where last name is. Actually, this will all be pushed up. Um, and city will be brought up to this form so that I can ask, what is your first name, email, demo file field, and city, instead of asking them for last name again, because I already know it. So it's a nice way to continue to use the same form 
um, but also still collect additional information on people in case they come back and submit it again for some reason or you know we already had some sort of information on them that we don't need to keep asking them for go into options you can choose to display a thank you message after the form submit or redirect to another page if you're using a form module uh, in HubSpot, this will also uh, give you the option to do that and you can choose to override whatever is set here on the landing page itself. Um, you want to send submission notification emails to, it'll be to yourself if you're creating this form or you can create it and send it to um, specific users who, you know, maybe it's the, con it's the support team so you want to send it to a member of the support team. Cookie tracking is how all of these submissions are associated with those browsers. Um, you want to keep these on. The only case, a good case where you'll actually want to turn this off is if you're going to be using the same uh, device for people to submit the form on multiple times. So example, you go to a conference and you know there's one computer where everyone's submitting the same form. You want to turn this off so it's not trying so HubSpot isn't trying to merge all these contacts into one browser session. You can pre-populate fields with no values. It's a great way just to um, help ease uh, form submission usage. Um, and you can't add links for users to reset the form. So in case where, you know, again, it is potentially a shared computer and they start, they go to this page where the form on and they see someone else's information, they can just click on a link and it'll clear that information for them to put their own in. Note that if you do have hidden fields um, in the form, so let's say, you know, I actually... I don't care if they put in last name, but I just want to hide it. I'll click on last name. I'll make this field hidden. And then if I, you know, assign some sort of default value like Patrick, anytime somebody submits this form, their last name will be assigned to Patrick and they won't actually even see a last name field appear because it's hidden. So if you add this link here to the form uh, and they click it, it'll clear this value for last name. So just be aware of that. Style and preview. This is good if you're um, adding a form to not a HubSpot page. Um, and you can kind of give some, some basic styles here. Otherwise, you can share this form um, with other people, either through an embed code or just really in a preview page itself. Again, it's very simple. I haven't published it yet, so none of those changes are saving. Um, and so this is what it would look like. Um, in, in a standalone page. Otherwise, if you go to a landing page and using a form module, this will just appear in a drop down list of all available forms. Okay, um, that is it for forms.